Good morning. I'm Misty Purcell. Welcome to my channel. I am the designer and fabric dyer behind Luminous Fiber Arts. Today is Monday the 8th of July and I tried to record this video yesterday and I had to start over so many times at different points. I was so incoherent that I was like, no, <laughs> I can't even watch that. Can't ask you to. So I'm starting over today in the morning, which is always a good idea because afternoon recording is usually where I'm not so good. And I sat down and I got everything set up and I heard the faint beeping in the distance of the neighborhood garbage truck making its way towards my house. And I was like, well, gonna have to hang out a few minutes because uh, it's really loud. So he has moved on and so I can record now. I have a lot to talk about today. It's been a few weeks since I've been here. It's been really busy. Um, I've been having a good summer, but it's been kind of a challenging summer, just life stuff happening. Um, I did get to go to the Nora Jones concert and it was awesome. So if you watched my last video, I mentioned that that was one of my plans for later in June and I had a great time. The concert was in Pittsburgh and I really, really enjoyed it. So that was a part of my birthday present from April was getting to go to that concert and yeah, it rocked. Um, so I had a giveaway on my last video for 3,000 subscribers and I chose three winners. And the question that everyone had to answer was what their superpower or superpowers were. And so there were awesome superpowers, many of them I wish I had. The most common superpowers were, um, like the most frequent ones were cooking and baking related or organization related. A lot of you are really good with food and organization. I am good at organization, but I am not great at organization. I think I'm good by necessity because I got tired of trying to find things and realized I was wasting so much time looking for things that it would just be easier if I would put things away to begin with. And I'm still not so good at putting things away. My One of my childhood flaws that I've never quite outgrown completely. So the winners of that giveaway were Chris. Her superpowers were cooking and baking for specific health issues. Mary Beth, her superpower was endurance and she's gotten through a lot of hard times through her faith. And Megan, her superpower is baking cookies, which I am sure comes in handy at the holidays. So um, all of the winners have been contacted and have all received their prizes. So thanks for sharing your superpowers. I really enjoyed reading them. So what else have I been up to? Um, I didn't get to go to StitchCon because I didn't try to go to StitchCon. Um, that wasn't really something I could do this year, but I had the honor of being asked to send a trunk show to StitchCon this year. And so I did do that. That was really cool. It was my first trunk show. Thank you so much to the committee for asking me. Um, I had no idea I'd be in such amazing company with designers I admire. Um, so it was just really cool to see pictures of my trunk show video. Um, Jan Hicks did one of the, the annex and I saw so I got to see my trunk show there too. That was really just very cool. Uh, and I was also asked if I wanted to provide a design for the attendees of StitchCon and I agreed to do that. So I wanted to come up with something, since StitchCon would be at the end of June, I wanted something that would be summer themed. And I was inspired, I kind of flailed about for a while as I sometimes do when I don't quite know what I wanna do for a design. And then I was inspired by a friend of mine. She was knitting, so this was like February. She was knitting a Fair Isle headband and it had this really pretty flower motif on it and I really liked the shape of the flower. And so I thought, well, maybe I'll start with something that's a flower that's kind of that shape and then I'll just go from there and see what happens. And so that's what I did um, and just kind of played around with that flower a lot and eventually got a flower that I really liked. Um, if I can find a photo of her headband or her working on her headband, I'll insert it so you can see what my inspiration was. Um, and then I just try to figure out like, well, what else should go with this, you know, design? What else should be part of it? And I'd been working on another design a while ago that had bees, 
and the design was not coming together. Um, so I stole the bees from <laughs> my, my non-functional design and added the, the bees to this design for StitchCon. And at first I just had one bee and I thought maybe I'd add some words around it and that was just not working. So eventually I decided that there would be a bee like kind of in each corner of the design. And then I felt like it needed something else. So I thought about it a while and I thought it needed something kind of pink or red. And so I decided to put hearts on it. Maybe it's easier if I show you, this is what I designed. This is called Berry Buzz. So I had hearts where the strawberries are and then I decided that um, I was in the shower and I was thinking about it and I thought, you know, the hearts are cute and they were actually very cute, but strawberries would be a similar shape and would make more sense. And this kind of looks like a strawberry blossom. So why not change it to strawberries? And so that's what I did. Um, so I had this design pretty much finished over spring break. So I went to market, I came back, I worked on it the rest of the week. My mom was visiting. She would give me feedback. She's like, your strawberries do not look like strawberries. <laughs> so I had to tweak the strawberries a bit. Eventually got something I was very happy with. So I had thought at first I might finish it as a circle, but then as I played around with it some more, it just um, didn't lend itself well to being finished as a circle, at least the way I was doing it. So I decided to make it a square I finished it a different way for StitchCon um, with a flat back to it and then puffy on the front by layering batting. And then I had Rick Rack. Uh, and then I stitched a second one and it was just really, I don't usually have time to stitch anything twice, um, but since this is a fairly quick stitch, which was part of my goal, I wanted it to be something that was small that people could, if they wanted to get it done in a weekend, that they could. And of course, um, I think watching everyone's videos, no one stitched that much during StitchCon anyway, but you know, I wanted to have a project that was fairly small and quick, and this is 59 stitches by 59 stitches. So it is a square. Uh, so when I stitched it again, I decided to do a pillow finish, and I had seen several pieces lately with rickrack around them that were pillows as well, and I wanted to do um, a pillow finish with rickrack and I'd noticed on Amy, I was watching Amy Loves Toads recently, she'd finished a piece and I asked her how she attached the rickrack and she said she sewed the rickrack on. And so I did the same thing and I asked her, I think I might've asked her if she had beads and I don't think she did, but I decided I wanted beads on my rickrack. So how I attached this, let me tell you actually what I used first before I forget that, in case you wanna know. All right, well, let me just start at the beginning. This is stitched on 32 count soft seed linen, which is available in my Etsy shop right now. And it's using all week Styworks floss, except for the little blue swirl from the bee, that is DMC. And on the pattern, I include a conversion for all DMC, should you prefer that, but I've got floss packs in my Etsy shop for the week's floss. And um, so, I use this rickrack from Hobby Lobby. It's called Merchant 41. And it is a half inch wide and its color is turquoise. And what I did was I just uh, put it around the pillow and pinned it in place. And I tried to line up the edge of the rickrack, the starting and ending edge before I did anything. I'll show you where I joined it. So here's the join. I tried to put it on a corner where it wouldn't be as noticeable. And you can see I tried to line this off just a little bit, but I tried to line it up. And so it actually, if I just pulled it around um, and tried to line it up, I it would have not lined up. So I, I made it line up here. And then I pinned it around and there were a little bit of space, but as I sewed it down, it all went away. So it was actually very easy. So I just used sewing pins and I stuck them, you know, every, I don't know, a couple of inches, inch and a half, something like that to hold it in place as I sewed it. Once I got, and I started with the join, the bottom part of the join, the underneath part, 
once I got a little ways, I glued the top part down just so I wouldn't have to worry about it later. And what I did was I took sewing thread that was close to the color of my rickrack, so a blue, I knotted it, and I came up through the rickrack where a bead is. I came up, put a bead on, went back down, you know, right next to it, and then like went across. So I was just kind of zigzagging, and I would try to grab fabric on the front and back so that there wouldn't be, you can see there's no space showing, there's no holes. And that's how I attached it. The beads are size 11 and the brand is Toho. These are gold lined aqua, not to be confused with aqua lined gold, it turns out there is a difference, uh, made by the same company. And the number on it is TR11990. And I'll link, I bought these on Etsy from South Pass Beads. Um, if you're interested in using beads on your version, if you stitch it or just on another project like this, I will link the listing for you and include the information. It's also included on the listing in my Etsy shop uh, in the description of the pattern, not on the pattern itself, but in the description in my Etsy shop. So this is what the print version of the pattern looks like. It's the same as the digital download. Both print version and digital are available in my Etsy shop. This is a fast, fun little stitch. If you do the fair and square swaps that I think Kelly and Joan are doing, um, I think the limit is 50 stitches by 50, but I think probably your partner, if you ask them, would let you do 59 by 59. This is not that much bigger. And I ended up cutting the square um, five inches and I lined up my ruler with the outermost part, which is the wing and the edge of the stem. There's just a tiny bit of back stitching where the stem is. So I lined up my ruler there to cut and I used a rotary cutter and that's how I got my square. It ended up being about five inches. So, fairy buzz. I really, really am happy with how this turned out. I think it's super cute. And I was really excited to have a design on the soft sea fabric because I think it's such a pretty blue. It's like a, it's like a bluish green. There's a bit of black in it. Actually, when I dye it, I add some black to the dye. And yeah, just super happy with it. I think it turned out really nicely. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to say about Berry Buzz. So that was my StitchCon recap, <laughs> for what it's worth. Oh, one more thing about Berry Buzz. So I have to give a, I mean, I think I always have to pretty much give a debt of gratitude to Vanna Pfeiffer for her tutorials. And this is no exception. You know, Vanna, if it weren't for you, I'd have all these designs that were finished really poorly <laughs> because I, I wouldn't know what to do. Um, so thank you to Vanna for her awesome tutorials. I used her tuck pillow tutorial to make this finish. And I will link that tutorial for you in the description below the video, just in case you need it. So, um, okay. I had some questions. One question was if I could show my tree. So hopefully you can see my tree back here. Um, I mentioned this back a little bit before Christmas that I'd purchased it. It's something that I've been wanting for quite a while and I bought it from, I think the shop is called christmastraditions.com. They're called like the traditions store, but I think their website is actually like christmastraditions.com. You can also find it sometimes on Amazon or eBay. It's um, by Bethany Lowe and it's a um, shredded paper tree. And it might be called a tissue paper tree. It's not actual tissue paper. It's this particular one is um, shredded pieces of paper that look like like there's print on them and some of it's music. It may all be music. I, mean, I don't recall. And then it's tea dyed. So the or tea stain, the kind that I have is that. And then the base actually has print and music on it, too. And then I put a garland on this. And this is a, I don't remember the exact height of it. It's not the smallest tree and it's not the tallest tree. It's the middle sized one. There's a couple different sizes. The smallest one seemed a little bit too small for what I wanted, but would look nice if you just wanted a really tiny one. The other one was a little bit too big. So this was Goldilocks just right. 
So that was one question I received. Another question, I've had several questions about the scroll rods that I use. And also if I would show how I stitch with my scroll rods and frame. So I will do that at some point. Um, I'll do it as soon as I can. I just don't know exactly when that'll be. But I'll talk about my scroll rods briefly now and then I can talk about them more when I do the video. When, when, the main obstacle for me personally is just that I don't have a good way to set up my camera. Like I either need to put my phone on a tripod of some kind or learn how to use my camera, like my real camera, to make video. And it's probably easy, but it's just one of those things where it would take time. And since time's a bit scarce, I just haven't had a chance to figure that out yet. So, um... I should, and I would like to actually be able to make these videos with my camera because I have a nice camera and I now have a tripod. So we'll see what I can do. Anyway, let me talk about my scroll rods. They are by Artisan Design and they're called Lock Scroll. I'm gonna show you just a project that I have going that's on them. So the knobs here on the side help you tighten them as well as here and Sometimes, sometimes I grab one or the other. You need to loosen both um, to advance your project, but what it has is it has a groove. I guess I should have grabbed one that wasn't in use so you could see. There's a groove in, in each rod, and then there's a dowel that looks like a popsicle stick. It's very thin, and it's what holds your fabric down. So um, you lay your fabric out, you, you put the top of the fabric kind of over that um, groove and then put the popsicle stick thing dowel in and it locks your fabric in place and you kind of slide it towards probably this end or there's a gap and that keeps it kind of down in here so it won't come out. Although you have to leave enough fabric um, when you if you if you can kind of see the popsicle stick here obviously you can't right now because I've rolled the fabric up but if you if you don't leave enough fabric at the top and bottom, sometimes it can kind of get loose on the edges. So I leave a minimum of three inches of fabric on the top and bottom. On the sides, I just usually do two. But the top and bottom, you need at least three. And I sometimes mark with just a tiny little dot um, where three inches is. And so that way I know kind of where to start my project and also just to leave that much at least for the project. So. They're pretty easy to load. There is a bit of a learning curve, I would say. Probably that's true of most scroll frames, but I haven't tried them all. I've actually only tried this in like a big box store brand once that was relatively inexpensive and didn't work that well for me at the time anyway. Mainly it's just trying to get it loaded evenly and have even tension. I don't have too many problems with the sides. I mean, maybe they're a little bit loose the last half inch inch, but I've got two inches here easily. So the part where I'm actually stitching, and I haven't got these taut here. Maybe I can show you what it looks like taut. And you can also tighten from here. I mean, there's a lot. Of, you, you, I'll show you on another video. Anyway, so here I've tightened it, and you can see that it's very tight in the middle. And maybe just a little loose on the edges, but where it's loose is not where I'm stitching. Another thing that you want to do if you order these is you, they'll say that um, how wide your fabric can be per size of scroll, width, size of scroll rod that you order, like the length of your scroll rods. Actually, I would say that if your fabric is stick, the length of your scroll rod here, the, the it's hard to be articulate about this. The groove obviously does not go all the way to the edge. So the thing that's holding your fabric in place maybe goes to about here. And then this isn't held in place. So I don't know if there's a way without buying any of these for you to know exactly what that width or length of the dowel is. But you really don't. And your dowel also, once you put it in, you have to slide it that way. So you have even less. The groove will be longer. But... When you push the dowel in that way and you've locked your fabric in place, if your fabric is sticking out beyond it, it won't hold it as well. So you'll have like a loose, a looser edge. So I've learned that 
that's something I have to take into account. Not actually what they say about how long you can fit on here, but how much of the dowel, you know, you want to have it meet kind of where the dowel is. That'll give you the, the best results that I think you'll be the happiest with. These are six inch sidebars. I've got one that's the eight inch sidebar and that's what my American flag quilt sampler is on. I, um, I think that for me, it's, it's nice to be able to see more of the project at one time, but it makes it just a little bit le like it's not as ideal because then there's that much more that I'm having to adjust or reach around up higher or lower to stitch. So for me, I don't, I only have that one and I've just preferred the six inch sidebars for all of my projects, even if it means I see less of them here. That's just, it's just easier to stitch for me. So that's my, my take on that. I'll link their shop below. You order directly from them if you want to. I'm, I'm not affiliated with them. They've never gifted me anything. I'm not going to get a, anything from them for telling you about their, their stuff. I'm, I'm not affiliated in any way. I just generally like their scroll rods. But as I said, I've not tried a lot of other ones, so I can't compare it to like um, roll a frame or anything. I find it to be relatively easy to use and that there is a learning curve. So um, you can order directly from them. I don't think they're distributed by anyone. And if you order, it usually takes <clears throat> two to three weeks in general. You pay up front and then two to three weeks later, they'll ship your order. It usually comes, I think, priority mail. So, you know, shipping is not inexpensive, but you know, that's generally true of scroll rods, I think. Okay, so I think that's all I had to say about these since I was asked. Okay. Oh, one other thing that I wanted to say about how I'm stitching. I've been using Priscilla and Chelsea's sewing method. So I was using a different one that I'd seen where you go all the way one way and then come back and cross your X going back the other way. And I could get a good result with one strand of thread doing that. So I had to stitch on 36 or 40 count. Hi. Um, but I was watching their video. The one that they recorded was the one that for me was easiest to see what Chelsea was doing. But I tried their method with two strands and I felt like my stitching looked pretty good. Maybe not quite as good as it does when I do it on a scroll rod, but really I was quite happy with how it looked. And so I've been doing more, I don't have anything I can show you right now, but I, well, I sort of do. I've been doing more stitching with two strands on 32 count and I'm enjoying it. And I'm not having problems with pain in my arms. I changed how I held the fabric and I think that helped. And also just by doing the stitching the way they were saying, I kind of had to change what I was doing anyway and that seemed to help as well. So I'm starting to stitch in hand as well as work on scroll rods, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's talk about projects. I am at like the most whips I've ever had and I'm not stressed. I think once school starts, I will be stressed, but right now I am not. So um, first I'll talk about <clears throat> where I've gotten things up to this point that I haven't touched since July. And then we'll talk about July because I'm doing the 24 hours of cross stitch July challenge, the monthly challenge. And I wanted to talk about that too. So let's start with what I just showed you, which was a way we ride. Oh, let me get the book first. So this was my birthday start this year in April. It's by Blackbird Designs. I love Halloween, if you don't know that about me, if you're new here. This is coming along pretty well. I'm getting towards the halfway mark. I'm not quite at the halfway mark. <clears throat> so here's where I am as of the end of June. I have not touched it since July started. So uh, since last time I worked on the house, I got the chimneys in, the roof line done, and I started filling in the house and I'm really liking the house a lot. It just looks super cool. Oh, I've got a hair on there for you. Here, let me take that off. I shed a lot. So uh, this is stitched on 40 count macchiato dyed by me. 
I have some, I think I might have some left in my shop. You'll have to check if you're looking for it. I have the chart in my shop. I know that. <clears throat> um, yeah, this border is slow going. I'm going to time myself next time I start a chunk of it just to see, but I'm going to say that I hardly get anything done in an hour. <laughs> uh, I'm using the called for flosses except for one. I think they're mostly gentle arts. They're very pretty. I'm really enjoying the stitch, although apparently I haven't enjoyed the stitch in at least a week because I haven't worked on it in July. So that's that one. Okay. Then my giant flag piece, American flag quilt sampler. Let me get the book for that. This was my birthday start last year. It's by Karen Kluba of Rosewood Manor. It's a beautiful design. It will take me my entire life to stitch. So last time I was working on this row where it says one <clears throat> and I'm calling this the one is the loneliest number row. I did finish it and I posted on Instagram my finish. And then um, it was Michelle and Carla were both like, hey, you're missing a few stitches at the bottom of the N, aren't you? And sure enough, I, I mean, I've added them now. It took like a couple of minutes, but I, I had forgotten them. So thank you, Eagle Eyes, for noticing and saving me what could have been like me going to the framer, having the whole thing framed and never noticing until after I had it framed or something that I, I mean, it would have been the end of the world, but it would have been annoying. So thank you for catching that. And I'm impressed that you noticed because I sure did not. Okay. And let's see, what else have I got to show you? Oh, berries in a basket. This is by Jenny. She's home stitchness on Etsy. This is, whoops. This is a PDF. I didn't print out the cover, but I'll insert a photo if I can remember to do that of what it's going to look like. Oh, I didn't say that um, the American flag quilt is stitched one over two on 40 count Zweigart soft ivory. This is stitched on 40 count macchiato again. And super cute. I changed the white to B5200 because that shows up better on Macchiato than what, whatever the white was. I don't know if it was 3865 or Blanc. I don't quite recall, but I had to change that. So I'm all about strawberries apparently, and I'm all about birds holding flags, as you'll see in a minute. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about... this. So I had a, I think I told you that I was going to do a summer solstice start <clears throat> and I decided to do Strawberries and Stripes by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. I've managed in the last few days to misplace the chart to be able to show you the cover. I don't know where I put it. I'll find it eventually, but I stitched it and finished it miraculously. This is super, super cute. So what I did, um, bef this was before I figured out that how to do two strands and have it look good. I tested this on 32 count, 36 count, 40 count. Decided to go with the 40 count. And this is uh, macchiato again. I guess I'm addicted to macchiato. I um, did not pull the colors. I just... Uh, because I was going to stitch this across and then cross back in hand and not stitch each stitch individually, I decided at, uh, not to use overdides because at the time I hadn't watched Priscilla and Chelsea's video yet. Anyway, what I did then is I just looked at the pattern photo and pull, I looked at my DMC color card and pulled floss colors that I thought looked similar to what Brenda had. Although I think I tried to keep it like the same level of 
kind of faded softness, but somehow I still brightened it up. Like, I don't even know. But the picture, or the colors looked really good together. <laughs> so the strawberries are supposed to be all red, but the red that Brenda used had a bit of pink in it. So the bottom of one of the berries was pink. And I thought, well, I'll just actually make it that way. And these were supposed to be an off-white color, but I just didn't think it was going to show up on this fabric. So I decided to go with a soft gold instead. So this is all DMC, yet another bird with a flag, <laughs> along with the crow that I did last time and my own design, the bluebird salute. Um, yep. So I'm super happy with it and I'm undecided whether I want it to be a circle. It's very tiny. Or a square. Do I want a pillow? I thought I knew what I wanted and I had this and the crow together and then I just didn't know. And I thought, well, Maybe I won't decide until next year. Like, I want to be really happy with however I finish it. I don't want to finish it and then be like, well, that's kind of lame. And then have to refinish it. So I wanted to give it some thought. So probably those won't get actually fully finished until next year so that I can overthink it for a whole year. <laughs> As one does. Okay, so that was a new start and a finish. And let's talk about now, I guess, the July challenge for 24 hours of cross stitch. So the July challenge that I'm doing the acrostic is team 24 hour. And so let's talk about what I've, the, the projects I just showed you, <clears throat> they're part of this rotation, but none of them have been stitched since this started in July. So. What I have worked on in July as part of this challenge is for T, I did Where There Are Bees. So the progress that you're going to see on Where There Are Bees is since the start of this challenge. And I've caught, I've gotten really far on this. I'm down to the last third of this design. I changed all the colors. Can you hear my stomach growling? I'm really hungry. Hopefully you can't hear it. Um, I changed all the colors. Still using DMC, although I saw an awesome one the other day on Instagram that was also brighter. I think it was a Japanese stitcher and she used over dyed flosses and it looked really cool. So this is where I'm at after spending um, like an hour and a half. No, 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 no. I don't know. I think it's like around three hours that I've stitched on this. I'm supposed to do four according to what I put down. Trying to do four hours on each one. Three or three and a half hours I've done so far. So I think there's a chance I could finish this this month and that would be nice. This is also from my very prairie year stitch along from last month. I'm not starting anything new until I get that done. So it's my very prairie year project for this month until it's done. And hopefully not next month because hopefully I'll be done by next month. Okay, so my other project was a new start, and I had a finish, and that is the stitch along that started this month from this book, The Magic of Christmas to Cross Stitch, which is available on Amazon. It's by Veronique Anjanje. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I am stitching. So the stitch along runs for the entire month of July. You can start anytime and you can stitch one design or as many designs as you'd like from the book. I'm stitching from this page. And I started with the deer. And then I moved on. Today I started the mice. So I started this July 1st and I finished it yesterday, July 7th. And then this one I started today. This uses DMC. The book has the design charted in color. I thought the charts were just a little bit small. I enlarged them by 125%. And I think, honestly, I could have gone a little bit bigger. The thing that I noticed that's difficult, it could just be my printer because I can see it okay in the book. But sometimes the back stitching covers up on the, on the chart. Covers up, it crosses the the block in such a way, the, the X, that I can't tell what color exactly the X is. Is it one or the other? And I have to like go back to the book and look really carefully. <clears throat> but I, you know, 
it's not a big deal. It's just an observation of my experience. Okay, so let's see what I've been doing with that. Where did I hide it from myself? Here we go. I didn't iron this. I try to iron things for you, but I didn't this one. I just was like, I just need to start this video. Oh my God. Can you stand this? Why is it so cute? Why? <laughs> uh, here, you need to, you need to see it even closer. So I'm going to insert a little stop motion video that I made of this, my progress. So basically every time that I worked on it for a chunk, when I was done with that chunk of time, whether it was a half hour, an hour, an hour and a half, I would take a picture. And then I made a little stop motion video like I did last month for the 24 hours of cross stitch 48 hours challenge. So I'll insert that here. And I'm just super happy with this. Now I think, I don't know if it will look good, but I think it might look cool to be finished as kind of a long oval. So my question is, now I've not looked into this at all, but is there any kind of ruler or template that you know of that has multiple oval sizes that I could buy? If you can think of anything, let me know um, so that I can finish this. And that's what I'm thinking. I think it might, I obviously have to put the template or whatever over to see how it would look. But I think it could look cool as an oval as long as there's not, as long as it's still balanced. I stitched this on 40 count white Zweigart. I didn't change any of the colors. Um, did I want to say anything else about that? No, I guess not. I think I had a thought, but it's gone. So then I started the mice today. Doesn't look like, it kind of looks like a mouse. <laughs> so I thought, oh, this is, so this is, um, the magic of Christmas is letter M in Team 24 Hour. And it's also letter O in Team 24 Hour. I finished both of those and then I'm going to make it also, <clears throat> I was going to do beggars fourth for the four. But I haven't started it. I meant to start it on the 4th of July. And then I was like, you know, I just started something a few days ago. I don't need to start something else. So I didn't. And I'm going to use the Magic of Christmas, the mice design, for four. Because there's four presents under the little mushroom that they're sitting under. So that'll be my four. I'm going to change this. I left blank so that I could just change stuff as I wanted to. I obviously can change whatever. But I wanted to leave a couple of them blank in case I wanted to do more on where they're bees or something else. The back stitching really makes these. Oh, I, the other thing I wanted to say is just like the size. Um, the chart doesn't, the charts don't give you any stitch counts. So you just have to count for yourself. But they all, on 40 count anyway, they all finish around a little over one and a half inches by three something ish, a little under four inches. They have different heights and widths, but that's kind of the general size of them on 40 count. I love this. I couldn't stop stitching this. Oh, it was so addictive. <laughs> it was really hard to put down. And I mean, there's a lot of color changes. So this took me, and I actually thought that was fast. It took me about nine hours to stitch this in hand with all those color changes. That seemed pretty fast to me. I don't know about you, that 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 seemed fast to me. And I, I liked keeping track of the time. Now, of course, I was like running my timer, getting up to go to the bathroom, heat my coffee, whatever. Um, but if I were gonna stop for any long period of time, I stopped the timer. Please feel free to join in anytime this month if you would like to. So that was my second start and finish. That is so awesome. The hashtag is Magic of Christmas Sal. I received some gifts and I made some purchases. So let's talk about that. My friend Cynthia um, got me a gift, a cross-stitch gift. 
She got me this cute Mill Hill kit. It's a little snow globe. I have yet to do a Mill Hill kit or anything on um, perforated paper. So that is an experience I need to have soon. Heather contacted me and she was stitching the Halloween rules set. She was watching like a old video of mine from a while ago where I was saying that I wanted Halloween rules and I'd gotten Christmas rules, which also I wanted, it was awesome. And she wanted to stitch Christmas rules. And so she hadn't watched my recent videos and she wondered, you know, had I started Christmas rules, would I wanna do a swap? And I was like, yeah, I would love to do a swap, but I haven't started Christmas rules. And I'm really busy now designing and dyeing fabric. Um, and I don't know when I can start it. So if you still want to swap or you can think of a way that makes sense to do that, that, you know, let me know. So she's like, that's cool. I'll just send you Halloween rules when I'm done and you can send me Christmas rules whenever, no pressure, which was really nice of Heather to do that. So she sent me Halloween rules. And I would like to start Christmas rules because at some point I would like to actually be able to send Heather <laughs> the set. So I need to pull the colors and then decide what fabric I would use. And I don't know if I have anything in my current lineup of fabrics that I dye that would be the right color. I'll have to pull the colors first and see. Then if I don't, maybe I've started experimenting to see if I can come up with something. So I love it. Thank you. I also was contacted by Jen and she sent me this very nice card. She asked me if I was interested in, <clears throat> oh, <laughs> there it is. What do you know? Strawberries and stripes. Uh, I have this on order from Brenda to get more of these in my shop. So shouldn't be too long before they come in. Okay, back to what I was saying. Um, so Jen contacted me and asked if I was interested in a couple of prairie schoolers. I think she had a couple extra and I didn't have these and they were on my wish list. And I was like, yes. I asked her if she would want to trade. She's like, no, you can just have them. So that was really sweet of Jen. This is Birdsong 1, Birdsong 2. They are so cute love them. Thank you, Jen. Alrighty, then I purchased some things. I purchased Thanksgiving Comes Again because I decided I needed it in my life and hey, it's the prairie year, so I should be buying Prairie Schooler sometimes, right? This will probably go on my window that I'm always talking about. Um, I have the Halloween one done, I have the winter one done, but I usually do take things down um, between Halloween and Christmas. So I think I want to do this for post-Halloween and then do a Christmas one for Christmas then do a spring one and a summer one. So that's what I'm thinking. And I also really like that squirrel. I think that could be an ornament or something. Probably someone showed that and I decided I had to have it, which is what happened here. <clears throat> I have to blame Jen of Jen Stitching Niche because she showed how she'd finish this. And I'm like, I just, I need that in my life. And I think it's out of print at this point because I couldn't get it from Hoffman. So Nancy of Needlecase Goodies had it in her Etsy shop. She's always super nice when I've ordered from her before and she was as usual. So I'm very excited. I really want to make this hat. I want to stitch this. Thanks, Jen, for, you know, enabling me. Then um, I got a couple more things. <clears throat> I really, I kept seeing this. Like I said, it's, it's bee time. I kept seeing this pop up on Instagram. And I believe that only um, 123 has this. It's a kit. I didn't necessarily need the fabric, but I might stitch it on this fabric or I might use my own. I don't know. I think it's super sweet. It does come with a little 
button. I just couldn't resist. And I also, you might have seen a previous video I showed I had some filigram charts that I purchased. This one, I don't think was available when I ordered the other ones, but I've had this on my wish list from 123 Stitch for a while, so I think it's such a sweet, sweet design. Very whimsical. And that uses Gentle Arts Floss. So those were my purchases. Let me talk about plans. So if I ever finish Where the Her Bees, which not like I've been working on it that long, I'm still thinking about starting this, Garden Samplers. <clears throat> But I worry that by the time I finish where there are, are bees, I will have mentally completely moved on from summer. I don't know. So this is possibly happening later this month, or maybe it's not happening till next year. I'm just going to have to wait. If I don't do this, I might do the fall sampler one. The one that everyone does with the leaves and the squirrels running, that one is really cool. So that could happen possibly instead of this. This is just an evolving idea right now. Um, I guess that's all of my plans. I'm not going to do from the archives. Oh, one other purchase. Uh, I'm not going to do from the archives because this video is long enough. So I was talking with Melanie about coverage on 3371, which is a brown that Prairie Schooler uses quite a lot. And <clears throat> she was talking about, we were talking about, um, Anchor is a possible substitute. So she looked it up to see what was the equivalent to 3371. And for Anchor, it was 382. So I got a skein. I haven't used Anchor at all. I got a skein just to see. And it's not like I think that my coverage is that bad with 3371. But I just wanted to see if it might be better with the Anchor. This is a little bit um, of a lighter brown. Whereas 3371 is more of a blacker brown. But I'm going to try this on some Prairie Schooler ornament. I think it feels really nice. The floss itself is just really soft and smooth. Um, so I'm anxious to try this and see what I think of it. So I wanted to mention that. So lastly, um, I'll talk about a new fabric that I've dyed. A little bit about my shop. I just had a shop update. Uh, over the weekend, so you can purchase Berry Buzz and the supplies that you need for that. They're available in my shop. My new color, which I love, of fabric is called Whisper, and it is a gray, soft gray, and that's pretty accurate. Hopefully it'll come up that way when you see it, but for me right now, this is pretty accurate. This is a very light gray. There's very light modeling on it. And several months ago, Jerry Caudell, the Yankee Creek stitcher, had contacted me and she was looking for a gray for, I don't know if it was early American, something she was going to work on. She didn't want it to be green, which is what Snow Day is. It's a green gray. Um, and I tried and I tried for months, you know, on and off. And I just, everything that I dyed was either green gray or it was a blue that was a gray blue. And I got like very beautiful things, but I did not get what Jerry wanted. <laughs> so finally... I tried so many things. Finally, I got it. It took me some some serious effort, but I got it. And I decided I dyed this like a million different ways, like just to see what like level of darkness I wanted. But I was getting ready to start stitching a new design that I'll be releasing next year. And I was thinking how the fabric background that I put on Max Stitch to like give myself a visual was a soft gray and that maybe I should use what was one of the lightest versions of this, of all the versions I dyed. Um, it would probably look good for the design. So I did start testing, I can show you. And this is just so you can see kind of what the colors look like on the fabric. I was playing around with a lot of different things. So what I found is that this is B5200, this white. That shows up really well. This is Grits from Weeks, this other white, and it doesn't show up as well, especially from far away. Now Grits is a bit of a yellower white, and then I've got here, um, I think that's Beige from Weeks and Goldenrod. 
So from far away, those yellowish colors, the goldenrod is, is more visible. The beige is not. So like yellow whites will probably not show up as well on this fabric as like a blue white, like B5200. But you can see I've got some different grays on here. They show up pretty well. Um, different yellows and, and yellow oranges show. And um, a lot of these colors are kind of bright, but then there's some grayed out ones and they all, they all work differently, but it just depends on your palette. But I'm really happy with this gray. I think it's a great gray and I'm looking forward to using it more. I'm thinking maybe for something patriotic, maybe for Beggar's Fourth next year. I better do it next year. I really want to stitch that. I even have it kitted up. I don't think I'm starting it this month. <clears throat> ah, anyway. So just so you can see like how some different colors look, these are a mix of DMC and um, weeks that I was auditioning for the design. Even with auditioning these, once I started stitching it <clears throat> and then had it across the room to look at it, I had to change colors um, because they didn't stand out enough or they just weren't quite working. And that's one of the reasons why I don't think, I don't know that I can ever have a model stitcher. Um, I like stitching my own designs, so that's one reason not to have a model stitcher. Another reason is that sometimes I change my mind about something or I get an idea as I'm stitching it, like, well, what if I did this? Which often happens with borders. Um, so yeah, sometimes I'm just still designing and, and especially the colors, like I just, it can look really good on the skein. It can look good on the skein against the fabric. It can look good in a little rectangle. And this is where I was stitching with two strands uh, with the sewing method, and I thought that my stitches look pretty good. So thank you, Priscilla and Chelsea, for making that tutorial, one. And two, just, yeah, sometimes even this fun little coloring experiment doesn't tell me enough for me to know that it's something's going to work or not until I actually stitch it. So I've spent a lot of time with this new design. It's the most colors I've ever used, like um, stitching part of it and then just staring at it for a few days before I stitch the next part. And that's kind of how it's been going. Okay. Um, I guess that was all I was going to say about that. So um, <clears throat> I have several fabrics in my shop. So if you've been looking for fabric for Bluebird Salute or the supplies to do that, I've got that back in stock. Um, I have the blue from Soft Sea for Berry Buzz. So also if you were at StitchCon and you need that fabric, I have that in my shop now. Um, I have some other colors in my shop, so go check it out. And my shop is Luminous Fiber Arts on Etsy, and I will link it below. Uh, I hope you have a great couple of weeks. I'm going to try to keep it to two weeks and then come back. I've got some traveling to do pretty soon, but I'm not exactly sure of the dates that I'm leaving town. So I'm shooting for about two weeks for my next video. When I go too long, it's hard to remember what to even talk about. And then I'm, you know, yeah, it's just easier if I do it like every two weeks. So that's what I'm aiming for. Thank you for hanging out with me today. And um, I hope you get lots of stitching in. And I hope you're enjoying your summer. Take care.